Why don't I just hop on in to it? Okay. We're going to talk about The Deep House, which is from 2021, so very new. Uh, and it is about a young and modern couple who go to <laughs> France to explore an underwater house and share their findings on social media, undergo a serious change of plans when the couple enters the interior of a strange house located at the bottom of a lake, and their presence awakens a dark spirit that haunts the house. I guess. Uh, and it's directed by Alexander Bustillo and Julianne Mori, who um, did Candisha, which we have yet to cover, but I've heard good things and I am very excited to cover that eventually. So <laughs> the film follows this YouTube modern couple who are known for exploring abandoned, creepy, and haunted places. I think it's just like if the place doesn't have people in it anymore, it's haunted. Yeah, that was the vibe. <laughs> like they were just in places we first see them exploring an abandoned like asylum or hospital or something i totally forget what they were what they said it was yeah they're just like it's been abandoned and it looks like no one's been taking care of it let's so it, let's go there let's go where we shouldn't be going <laughs> yeah um we learn fairly quickly what kind of youtuber ben is he jumps out at his partner while she's like kind of freaked out about where they are um his partner tina and immediately establishes himself as the true villain of this film yes and i refuse any other <laughs> explanations uh he is the villain yeah. and as soon as he did that i was like no <laughs> like this is the kind of person who would end up in uh aokigahara the forest and like stomping around where he shouldn't be yeah touching stuff he shouldn't uh and being like it's different so whatever yeah. um <laughs> so ben and tina decide they are going to explore this sunken town in france which is tina's home country and it's clear uh tina is strictly in this for her love for ben though the lack of chemistry between them is palpable it's so weird there's like a time at the end where she's like freaking out and she's like are you okay, baby? I love you. And it's really weird. It's like clearly for her. She does not care about this I man. So I really wonder if the actors just didn't like each other. Yeah. It's hard. And it's also hard yeah. to have chemistry underwater. Like yeah. you're just in suits and you're kind of just like poking around. And I'll explain like there's a lot of just anxiety in the making of it because there was it, it's just not like any other film. Like there's a lot of complications just from the environment uh, that yeah. made it difficult to give any guidance or really have any control and so things are just like I, like it's amazing that it came out the way that it did yeah. <laughs> like I'm like very impressed I'm like wow you did that yeah. um so the film is a mix of found footage drones and regular cinematography uh which I think really added to the film I think if it was just through their lenses sometimes that gets annoying um yeah. where this kind of added to it in, in a beneficial way uh Tina has been training for this dive but it's clearly an she's like clearly uncomfortable with the challenge yeah. and she any chance she gets is kind of like trying to get out of it and she we see her timing herself holding her breath in a tub and she reluctantly explains to ben that she's reached about three minutes three minutes which informs us just how much time she's going to be left with under the water at the end <laughs> she said yeah. About three minutes, I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to get down to the wire. That's how much time you got to get to the surface. Yeah. Um, ben makes jokes constantly about her wanting to get out of it and essentially joking that he is forcing her to do this. And he confirms our suspicions that he is a villain uh, by invading her privacy and filming her while she is peeing. Yes, seriously. He does that within the first five minutes of this film. And you're like, okay. Yeah, you're the worst. The villain. <laughs> Signed off uh, on you having any <laughs> redeemable qualities right now. Yeah. Uh, eventually, they get to the town, the part that's above water, and Ben wanders around and pretends to be a real vlogger, uh, explaining the town is practically abandoned, even now, and is dying, only to have it revealed quite quickly that the town is bustling. It's just that everyone was already down in the water enjoying their summer, and the sunken city that they saw, the supposed abandoned, creepy place that no one has ventured into, is actually a popular tourist and summer spot. And... While Ben is deflated, Tina is silently elated. Um, but then Ben 
gets to talk into a local named Pierre and learns that there's yet something to explore. An abandoned singular house tucked far in the woods and down the water ways, and the adventure is back on. It's for the views. Yeah. It's super. Strangers aren't dangerous. They aren't. You're in a different country. They're not going to murder you. It's fine. Like Teresa's. Like, yeah. It was just like the dumbest. <laughs> exchange like why would yeah. you even think this was a good idea it's such and it's so random like you just does pierre just sit there waiting for someone to ask about the sunken house <laughs> like it's like of all the people for you to run into yeah this random guy is the one that you found he went to get so, a drink and he's like hey guy you're the 10th exactly. person i've asked in the last 15 minutes you want to go see a house that's underwater <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, what? what? So weird. No. And then, like, there's, like, a whole, like, there. so um, they journey to, so they arrive at the destination, and uh, they're, like, driving there, and the whole time, like, Tina's having a conversation with Pierre in French. And remember, they're in France. And Ben, like, pops in and is like, do I need to pay for subtitles? He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Like, can you guys speak English in your country, please? Um, yeah, like, what? Again, he's the villain. I can Every time he was there, I was like, really? Anyway, they arrive at their destination after a hike from the main road. So they drove out to who knows where, and then they have to hike to the water. And this is a big red flag, but white people be white people in. Yeah. Okay? As we do, <laughs> you know? It happens, right? And so, uh, first of all, you cannot catch me lugging my own oxygen through the woods to then go do more physical activity underwater. Yeah. Could not be me. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I feel like I said the same thing. I was like, I'm not scared of this movie because I, there was never a situation in which I would be here. Yeah. Um, I texted Kat when we were watching it because I was just like, I'd be like taking little hits of air. <laughs> while while I'm hiking. hiking like, Okay. I'm like, no, they're not going to be me. Um, ben lets Tina know they have one hour of air, which is entirely too little time to do an explore, like at all. Um, and throughout the entire underwater adventure, I was constantly yelling to Kat, like, how long has it been? Because it felt like it had taken at least 20 minutes just to get to the house and inside of it. Then they're exploring it for like ever. And then they yeah. never account for that or like accommodate for the fact that they're going to need to get back up in a similar amount of time that it took them to get there. Cause yeah. you can't just shoot right up. <laughs> you can't do that when you dive. Like they have, they do not at all talk about actual diving concerns, which is what would have been really horror. Like <laughs> you just talked about like, we're down here and that is dangerous in and of itself that you can't just swim up really fast to the surface we watch 47 meters down and they taught us things yeah <laughs> okay. and also it's like the way they enter into that like there's just so many factors that just don't make logistical sense in addition to just the time constraints like one 80 percent, i'd be like i'm going back up bye yeah 80 percent is not enough air for me to feel safe in this enclosed space um and then also like yeah. the entrance to the house does not give enough room to like get out of there quickly yeah, I'm going to talk about it because <laughs> I have a lot of fear. Like, this is what, how it played into me because I was like, nah. Like, the whole movie, I was like, nah. No, no. Nah. <laughs> Hard no. no. What? No. <laughs> like, the whole time. Like, before anything, like, quote unquote, spooky happened, I was yeah. already afraid. And then, like, the spooky happened. I was like, that's not even anything to me because, like, you could have just <laughs> yeah, made this. We could have just done this. This could have been the descent, but underwater, and I would have been <laughs> sufficiently. Yeah, like, Make the fish Frightened. weird or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we start our journey underwater and we get fun glimpses of cars and other usually above water things that are now underwater and therefore cooler. Yeah. And uh, Ben continues to be the worst. He laughs at Tina uh, when she gets caught on something and becomes panicked. And later he blares heavy metal music that scares the fish and me. Again, he is a villain. Um, and when they arrive at the property, the front gates are adorned with religious warnings and paraphernalia. And Tina remarks, I forgot how religious they were back then. And they completely both of them ignore or rather shut off their deep thinking parts of their brain moving inside without a wonder as to why it appears the townsfolk were trying to keep something evil in yeah this estate <laughs> so they never they will remark about something be like hey look at that thing and they're not like hey look at that thing <laughs> yeah. single time are they like hmm 
no red flags. Anyway, they reach the house and it's oddly sealed up. And why would you need to seal up a house that is going to be drowned? Yeah, like you've <laughs> they, abandoned the house. You don't need it to, yeah. They spend not a single thought on this query before working to find a way in. And one jump scare by fish later, they find the one way in. And they're excited to make their way through the house. And again, never stopping to think about the fact that there is one way in and therefore one way out. Yeah. <laughs> and if this one way out were to become inaccessible, well, we don't worry about that, honey. It's nothing. Okay. Yeah. We don't have time to think about that. Think about the views. Okay. 10 million views. I don't even know. <laughs> the moral of the story is anything. don't date Ben. <laughs> I don't I'm, leave Ben anyway. alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> if you're dating a Ben, stop. Yeah, stop dating Bens. Uh, eventually, while exploring the house, they encounter some unsettling, spooky, and haunted things. Like uh, the ch there's a children's room that's eerie and not in the usual way that a child's bedroom completely submerged underwater and frozen in time would be. Um, <laughs> but rather, because <laughs> that in itself, again, would have been sufficient. Uh, instead, this particular child had some odd hobbies, such as stabbing photos through the antlers of a dead deer. Yeah. On their vanity. Uh, okay. They also have like video equipment amidst their dolls and girlish delights. It's like super weird. And then Ben thinks he sees a silhouette of a girl on the bed, but shrugs it off when nothing is there because I don't know, maybe it was a fish. Yeah. It's a trick of the light down here in the middle of the water. Um, I also forgot to mention that they have this underwater compatible drone that follows them around named Tom, like a peeping Tom. And this camera is a fun tactic for them to send into a room first to scope it out and make sure it was safe. And I was like, that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, of all I the decisions. get that. Yeah. I love that. Like them sending it in every time I'm like, yeah, good idea. Cause I'm not going in there. Like those parts, like when they're first exploring the house i was genuinely like frightened yeah I, it was like you know it, like a found footage film where you're kind of like what's going on like you i don't want to go in the room you're going in the room why are you going in the room yeah it and was so, like, chill for time, a while <laughs> in terms of like being like, actually scary and fun yeah like they the characters were annoying and like in a way that's even more than regular horror protagonists are because oftentimes they always do the things you, you're yeah. yelling at them in the screen not to do these ones are exceptionally bad at it like <laughs> yeah. or just like there's a sufficient amount of gaslighting happening to tina and um but the the camera going in there first was really efficient they have like one part where there's like they hear a piano uh -huh. which is like i don't know how like anyway they hear a piano and they're like must be another diver <laughs> How? Like, was it Pierre? Like, P did Pierre also lug oxygen next to you? No. He, what do you mean, was it Pierre? Like, no one can hold their breath the 20 minutes it took you to get down. I can't with them. Idiots. Absolute idiots. <laughs> like, in a way, I've never. Anyway, in the kitchen, <laughs> they send uh, Tom into a kitchen. The camera and it glitches and when the couple go to explore the room they find a giant jesus statue hanging on the wall normal uh but it's not a wall it's actually a hidden door and again without asking why would people want to hide this secret door with literally jesus yeah if that symbolism isn't there enough for you they take jesus from his perch where he was protecting us and they head on in yeah to the room he was trying to protect us from Okay. And they put him on the ground. I was like, it's so rude. Like, they just least... toss Jesus to the side. Like he's trash. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> in there, they find more rolls of footage and a couple hanging above a pentagram. They are chained up and they got these weird masks on and they're like, it must be some medieval torture. It's not. Apparently they just did it for kicks or whatever. Um, but it's above a pentagram. <laughs> And Venge is like, uh, oh, it's a pentagram. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, that's a regular run-of-the-mill thing to see underwater in an abandoned house that's been sealed Like, up. that's already been pretty creepy this whole yeah. time. And it's like, when I was watching, I was like, hey, who dropped all these red flags? <laughs> <laughs> everywhere um then a creaky door opens and of course ben goes in there and he finds body parts and jars because why not and this is the last straw for tina now she's had it 
and she asks them to leave. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> I've already been, I've already left because I never went down there. Um, but big surprise though, their one way out yeah. is now a brick wall because of satanic witchcraft. Yeah. And things spiral out here as they continue to make more bad decisions and Tina becomes increasingly appropriately panicked. Yeah. Um, and some of it was pretty cool like when it came to that um so some truly frightening things so i was really excited to watch this film and and i also genuinely enjoyed it and i know how you feel like but i really did like the first time i was like whoa that's really cool so even with its silliness and how angry i was at ben through the entire piece i was still having a good time and so cat is afraid of the ocean because we don't know what's down there right but I get claustrophobic, which means films in space or certain underwater films like Underwater or The Deep House yeah. also really frighten me because <laughs> we shouldn't be down there. We don't Agreed. belong underwater. Yeah. You are at the mercy of the equipment and the environment around you. Like it's not a person. <laughs> you know, it's not a ghost. It's not a person. It's, it's really just, just like the, the environment. Yeah. And that's scary to me. That's what Reasonably. I want to know. So you are always one malfunction, one cave in, one false step, or one creature away from death. Yeah. When you're in there. So here's a list of things that scared me about this film. Uh one hour is not enough oxygen to be exploring a whole house, and you don't even know where it is exactly because you didn't plan to go to this house, so you don't have a map. You have no idea. Like you need to have all the information before you're like, I got one hour. Let's just pop in, yeah. pop out. You, what if it took an hour to get there? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything. Like, you're too, you're too cavalier, Ben. What are we doing? No one knows where you are, which yeah. is a problem, remember, with the descent. Um, that's a problem with, I think, the one where the white people be on the tower. They shouldn't be up there. Yeah. The guy gets his arm trapped. It's always people, like, out somewhere they shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> deep what is it deep water also happens all the time but no one knows where you are pierre who turns out is also a villain ben is the villain but pierre is also bad uh brought them there with intentions um (laughs) and it is very far from their original intended location so you're in the middle of the woods and now underwater you have disappeared you were a disappeared person you were missing gone forever no one's coming to find you they don't know yeah (laughs) to do that right they went into the house when there were no exits other than one precarious window that could at any time become obstructed bearing your only escape yes there's a stupid supernatural part where there's a wall in front of it (laughs) because like i don't know what their powers are but somehow there's a wall in front of the window but even if that hadn't happened like we could have had a real thing happen like like a very heavy piece of furniture fell in front of it or something like yeah People die in cars underwater because they can't move. the. They never discuss the issue of swimming too fast to the surface, okay? At least in 47 meters down, we get an explanation of that. These two never took a diving certification class. No one uses sign language or any of, like, the information, like, that they used to communicate by divers. Yeah. I think one time they do, like, an okay. Yeah. (laughs) And that's, like, and, like, they do, I think someone does a thumbs up, which is up, not we're all good so clearly they don't know what they're talking about and they rely on the audio and they rely on tom and they also get split up it's a whole thing tom is an evil robot (laughs) and i don't know why he was evil but he was (laughs) because there was just times when he was glowing red and he was all like i can't let you do that tina he didn't say that but that's what it was yeah that was the vibe so he was scary like he was a great tool to explore but then he was evil like, she kept being like Tom, and he was like, <laughs> like, why are you evil all of a sudden? Like, that scared me. And then the unanswered question of why everything was in good shape despite being submerged underwater before the protagonists were even born. Yeah. Like, what? No one answered that, but what was that? That was scary. I was like, that's pretty peculiar. Things that did not scare me in this film the ghosts, they were spooky at first. Like, for seeing them preserved was really interesting when they were, like, hanging there. Yeah. And then, like, the one time when she was, like, behind him. Yeah. And they, like, are trying to escape. I was like, oh, jump scare. Like, the fish. Yeah. Caught me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I absolutely understand the challenges of filming people without suits underwater and trying to be scary. Because yeah. that's all they could do is flow. I get it. There's there's restrictions. But I really could have just done without them completely. 
the real horror was just being underwater. <laughs> so, One like, thousand percent me. agree. Um, and I get it because it's supposed to be like the haunted house or whatever. But ha- what was ha- so the other thing that was not scary was any of the satanic cult plot, if that's what it is. It was very messy. The family was sacrificing, spoilers, farm kids to Satan for reasons. Yeah. (laughs) Question mark, question mark. And I don't know what they were getting in return or if they're just evil. And the kids were involved. It was like a whole family affair. But the town figures it out and bars them inside. They kill the girl. Pierre escapes. Spoilers, Pierre is the child of these people. Um, And then the, (laughs) the adults are chained in the basement but they're when they're first exploring the house they find a wall like a door in front of the door because the whole house was shut up again remember and inside of that front barricade there's scratches on the door but it was like those were there after they locked the family in there because they would not have this crazy front door in front of their regular door you don't see that in the flashback so it was clearly put there to keep them in there when the water was coming and so why are there scratch marks? So when the girl's dead, Pierre's gone, the parents are downstairs. <laughs> no one could have done those scratch marks. Doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> so that part was like, oh. Um, if they were trying to say that it was for the kids who were abducted, then it would have made sense to have it in the basement or in that one door than to have it at the front door. Um, yeah. Also, what do Pierre and these ghosts get from this? They get to live preserved underwater, I guess. For what? Like they yeah, get to live, do they get to live again? Is killing just fun? Do they inherit the earth? Like what? Ha- they're just down in the water, and they get to float. <laughs> we all <laughs> float down here. Like I yeah, don't know what don't the know. goal is. Things that scared me that I'm ashamed to admit: the damn fish, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's popping in and out. Is really creepy looking. It's a gross no fish. Thanks. Yeah. No, thank you. Um. The directors are quoted as saying, but here we wanted the audience to have the visceral feeling of being in this element and that it can be as scary and as dreamlike. Um, And yeah, it was scary and dreamlike. And then it was weird. (laughs) (laughs) So I think the most interesting part of this film and why I enjoyed it so much was the actual filmmaking aspect. Because the whole time I was like... What is I was like, are those really the actors? Like, were they in the suits or is there professional divers in the suits? And it's just them doing voiceover because sometimes it feels disconnected. Like their yeah. voices don't match their actions. Like, there's a part where she's like freaking out, but she's like not freaking out. Bodily language freaking out. Um, but no, from what I could see and tell, the actors are in the suits. So yeah. <laughs> um, but the audio still might have been different. So I found myself wondering how any of it was possible and what the challenges may have been with having a film shot almost entirely underwater. Except for that beginning part where we're traveling, everything's underwater. Um, and thanks to a helpful interview on Bloody Disgusting called The Deep House, Alexander uh, Bustillo and Julian Mori on the challenges of filming a haunted house movie underwater by Megan Navarro, I found answers. And here are some of the challenges and experiences um, as explained by the directors. They said... The process of shooting underwater came step by step. All the security around it and shooting eight to 10 hours a day underwater. It's very exhausting. And how to deal with the fact that it's almost three times slower underwater than a regular shoot. As soon as you want to move something in the set, you have to call through the microphone. Okay, we need to move the pots on the chimney, please. You have a diver going down to the chimney and taking the pot and say, okay, here, no, 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 on the left, more, 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 stop. No, too much. Back, back, back. It was quite frustrating in the beginning because we are the kind of directors that are on set with all the crew. We are touching everything and we are changing stuff ourselves. We are talking to the actors and we are playing for the actors. And here we were on the surface. Everyone else was underwater. Uh, We are sitting in front of our monitors with our microphones and giving our orders to everyone in the beginning. It was quite frustrating, but it was the way to do it. Um, and this is a haunted house film. And so there are ghosts, like we said, right? However, the ghosts we see are regular people just underwater without dive suits. Um, and they ended up being a bit funny on screen, but I think using them instead of CGI or practical effects was a positive, um, because it would have been even cheesier. And and when you think about the fact that these are just regular people, just like, (gasps) 
on their breath and floating on you. Uh, yeah. Like, I get why they were like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the two leads of the film get dive suits and most likely much training on safety, hopefully. And the ghosts are out there just free balling the water, you know? Which is like, terrifying. Like, there's that's very much like setting yourself for incidents, too. Because it's like, so you're scary. in rooms underwater, you know? <laughs> exactly. So yeah. when asked about how they approached their ghosts, Bustillo answered candidly, the ghosts were a real problem at the beginning. We didn't know how to do the ghost. We thought maybe we could use special effects, but no, it's too expensive. It will not work underwater. One day we spoke with some crew members and one suggested that maybe we could use a free diver. We started to look after free divers who could possibly play a ghost in a horror movie. And we found a couple of older free divers to play the parents, but the more complicated challenge challenge was to find the young girl. It's very difficult to find a girl around 11 or 12 years old who could dive for real without oxygen at six meters down. We were lucky. We were very lucky there too, because we found Carolina Massey in Monaco. She was only 11 years old during the shooting, but she was a free diver since maybe three or four years ago. Free diving is her passion. She's trained by the world champion of free diving in Monaco, Pierre Froba. Um, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it, again, it has like, now I have more appreciation. Like there's this 11 year old floating around and she was the scariest part. Yeah. Because <laughs> she was in places. Like she wasn't just like, Ooh, <laughs> coming at you. Um, then we were able to do all the stuff with ghosts for real on the set and without CGI or special effects. All you can see on the screen was shot for real. We give her some oxygen and then action. They go underwater, they act, then up. It was very stressful for us, of course, because it's a little bit dangerous, a lot of bit dangerous, but it was incredible to watch on the screen. Wow, it looks for real and without effects and post-production CGI. We are not dealing with a green screen. It was a real joy for all the crew to, crew to watch. It's really, really creepy. Um, and I would agree. She was definitely, and like just having, like, it's silly, but I was like, if I'm down there and there's, I don't know what they can do. And I still don't know what they can do as a viewer because nothing was defined. So, like, what happens when they're there and they do the flashing so they're closer? I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, if where is, like, a haunted attraction and it was like, you got to go underwater, I'd be like. <laughs> yeah, it would already be immediately, no. <laughs> well, first of all, I think there's a lot of liability there. That would be a problem. But, yeah. Yeah, no. I can't breathe above ground. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just. Under. No. No. I ain't going in a place. Anyway, in an article on Variety titled the Deep House Directors Chat About Making the Bloom House Acquired Underwater Horror Film by Elsa Keslassi, the challenges are further explored. And they say, the Helmers explain that directing the actors under the water presented another level of difficulty because they couldn't be fully wired. And there's no Wi-Fi down there, points out Bustillo. We had an engineer who took months to create a system where we had antennas placed in the water, which were connected to one another. This unique system required us to work with unusual crew members and allowed us to see the dailies on the monitor above water, says Maury. The pair explained that the house was built on large grids and progressively plunged into a nine meter deep water tank that was 20 meters wide. Near the water tank was a warehouse where the decors were being fabricated. We couldn't leave the whole house in the water for days at a time because the decors would have been ruined Exactly. <laughs> so we would immerse only parts of the house underwater and we're shooting scenes floor by floor. We could only immerse one meter per hour, which represented six meters, says Busillo. Um, the whole process was crazy and we owe it to Jacques Blard, who was a master of underwater filming. Blard notably created Beyonce's aquatic music video, Renin says Maury, and in order to create the muddy look of the water and give it some density, the director said some food items such as mashed Brussels sprouts were thrown in it. Basilo says <laughs> he wanted the picture to be beautiful as well as nightmarish. I was like, that is so cool. <laughs> like, they have, like, these set pieces because the, I was like, you can't get a whole house down there. And the way that it looks, it couldn't be something that's already a house that's down there, you yeah. know? Because um, it wouldn't look that way yeah. after all this time. So I was like, that's so cool. They had to do it in segments and they had to like submerge them and then be like, all right, we're all, do we're doing all the living room. So you come in and out at different points of the time, do it really quick because now the stuff is decaying because it's underwater. Um, yeah. Put in some more mashed potatoes. Like, what are we doing? Um, <laughs> it was like, it would have been so fun to be on that set. Um, 
Anyway, so as a found footagey film, I enjoyed this exploration of a sunken home, and I was stressed and worried about what they would find in each room, and the drone to um, Tom was a great tool to explore for them, and it really reminded me of how I sometimes play a horror video game where I'm trying to use the mechanics to, like, peek around a corner before I go inside, um, and before any supernatural plot points were introduced, I was having a good spooky time. Ultimately, I still really enjoy the film and recommend it if you're looking for a fun, thoughtless time. Like, you got to be as thoughtless yeah. as the protagonist. <laughs> Don't ask too many questions. It's like in Snowpiercer, like, you can't really ask any questions about, like, physics, you know? Like, you can't be like, yeah, what make train go? Well, yeah. who's, who's maintaining the tracks? <laughs> yeah. No one's asking those questions. The because, like, <laughs> we don't ask those questions just focus on the story right yeah um but i did i'm not going to go into a lot of details but i did want to um kind of touch on two pieces of media that cover sunken cities specifically um because we didn't watch them for this episode but while we were doing research for the episode it was like oh wait <laughs> we yeah, didn't watch any too. of these other things that actually apply um and so Kat is going to explain those horrors of like actual sunken cities in their section um, where many communities and groups of people were completely wiped out in those sunken cities and for very specific reasons. Um, but there are two pieces of media that came to mind while we where I thought if we wanted to focus less on a haunted house, but underwater. <laughs> No yeah. kind of spin uh, instead and instead on horrors of sunken cities, I would have covered these other things. So there is a terrible episode and I say it's that's <laughs> doesn't really mean anything because every single one of those episodes are terrible yeah. of American horror stories, the like uh anthology series. <laughs> They're all pretty bad. There was one that I liked and it had um uh Gabaret. Uh, Gab Gabri Tibide, uh, who played Precious. Um, mm -hmm. She was great. Anna had Schmidt. Okay. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, that one was cool. And uh, that's maybe one other one that was interesting, but all of them were pretty bad. But there's one titled Lake, and it is about a mysterious drowning that uncovers secrets at the bottom of this lake. And the big reveal, spoilers for a show you should not watch, is that the ancestors of the boy who drowned were responsible for the town being flooded in the first place. And they had profited off of all of it, despite the deaths of the residents then and the visitors now. However, the victims and villains of this episode were both incredibly white, and I feel like it completely skipped over the realities of these sunken cities in that the victims were almost always BIPOC folk, yeah. um, which is why Kat was helpful enough to show me an episode of Atlanta, <laughs> because it actually covers that. Because I was like, this was a terrible episode, but it does cover sunken cities. It's yeah. just like white on white crime, and it's like, why aren't we talking about that more? Um, yeah. <laughs> In the first episode of season three of Atlanta called Three Slaps, we open with two men fishing. So it's just like this part about the sunken cities is at the beginning. Um, yeah. We open with these two men fishing, one white and one black. The black fisherman explains that he always feels uncomfortable and frightened of the lake. So he's like, we should skedaddle because it's getting yeah. dark. And he expresses his fear and recounts a harrowing story from his youth here. And he says, this place always gave me the heebie-jeebies, man. I almost drowned in the water when I was like eight, he explains, noting that he felt like he was being pulled. The white fisherman responds that he believes him and that it was, it might just be true. Because <laughs> he divulges that it's a whole town underneath us. This whole lake used to be a town. Houses, farms, roads, there's a whole raceway down there. State government built a dam, flooded the place. Anyone who didn't leave drowned. And furthermore, he explained, town was black, dude. A self-governing black town. Distressed, the black man responds, so there are black people under us right now? And he says, a lot of souls down there. That's what pulled you under. Um, and in this article I found, uh, they say, as a white man muses on about the sunken city, the lake's haunted past, and the blinding effects of whiteness, his voice begins to muffle and his eyes disappear. We're cursed too, the white man says, as an array of dark-skinned arms ascend from the water, dragging the black man into its depths. And I am 
thankful <laughs> that Bustillo and Maury stuck to their, albeit sloppy, satanic plot device. Yeah, because they um, would have done it right. <laughs> it would have been weird. Um, yeah. The, the film is set in their home country of France, and so their lakes aren't ripe with the racism and violent history that we have here in places like Lake Lanier. They have their own history, also violent, but different. Yeah. And so it wouldn't have made any sense. So I think perhaps a young filmmaker out there could learn from this film how they too could tell a haunting story of a sunken city, but also explore the true horrors under the water. That of the American way. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> so I liked it. For, <laughs> but pr probably not for like, like, I know, I know there's people out there who's like, this was trash. I thought um, it was really fun until like halfway through when they just decided to put plot in there that didn't make any sense. It was so and weird. There's so many like, questions. <laughs> it kept it, going too. Yeah. It was just, if they just made it scary underwater time, like if the, instead of there being a stupid brick wall and like wall Jesus, like other things, like there's <laughs> like dumb things in there that was like, it really didn't need to be this. You could have literally just made it like seem like it was haunted. Maybe you think it's haunted the whole time and it's not. It's just these people should not be down there. And this house is a death trap. And I would have been like, this is the best film wow. ever. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah I would have <laughs> loved it. But then you inserted like this really weird storyline that I was like, I don't understand. And then I was so mad with how much I didn't understand that I just stopped enjoying the movie entirely. Yeah. It's also like. Pierre sent them down there, but the house couldn't really, like, the people didn't start moving around until Ben took off their masks. But, yeah. like, what if they just never did that? Yeah. <laughs> like, then they're, they're just trapped in there anyway. Just dumb. For, like, why? Like, it was just dumb. And as mm -hmm. you said, like, you don't know what they're getting out of it. Like, is is it so that they just get to just be pruny forever underwater? Yeah. Like, yay? Love that. <laughs> Thanks, devil. <laughs> Wish I could be that forever. Yeah, like, <laughs> one, I guess, like, you shouldn't be encouraging people to join, join cults. But, like, also, like, what are they getting out of this? Like, what is the benefit? And then yeah, he's, like, suddenly. Join a cult, you have to have a good reason. Yeah, and, like, suddenly he's just, like, this is the chosen path. And you're, like, why, though? I don't understand <laughs> why you've suddenly been possessed in this way. Like, there's no plot. Yeah, and what yeah. did you accomplish? And he's, like, the house knows, and there's a snake. And you're, like, why was there a snake? She mentioned because the was devil of snakes. Like she in the woods, she like jumped. Yeah, but it was like, like was two seconds. It was like two seconds, and um, <laughs> it's very bad. Yeah, I yeah. didn't like the movie, <laughs> but <laughs> totally I fair. also totally recognized loud. it wasn't for me. Uh, yeah. and that's fine. 